Carlos, welcome back. Hey, nice to see you again. Likewise. How are you? Likewise, I'm doing very well. Uh, Carlos, we're going to jump right into the questions here. I know the community is really curious about what you're working on. So CLSQ had an announcement of a partnership with Saudi Arabia to help them meet their Vision 2030 digital goals. Can you tell us about that partnership and what you're going to be providing them with? Yeah, so uh, as you know, the uh, Hush Grab Hedera has signed a agreement. Uh, it's a $250 million agreement with the uh, PIF, which is the uh, public investment fund of Saudi Arabia, to basically develop a ecosystem of companies that will use Hedera uh, backend network as a way to develop innovation. You know, Saudi Arabia is a big innovation country. They are spending billions of dollars on creating an intelligent country by the year 2030. So because we have a joint venture in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in, uh, we have been doing that for many years, we, we discussed with uh, Hashgraph how we could join forces by bringing our knowledge of cybersecurity in, of the market, what we are doing with the Saudis in uh, microchip semiconductor, plus what uh, Hedera is doing with the uh, public investment forum. Uh, so, so this is basically the project. I mean, now what we are doing is identifying projects and they will candidate to that funding. And those projects will be funded with $250 million. Uh, Hedera has put $50 million and the Saudi government has put $200 million. And uh, the idea is to leverage that, right? So we could uh, go much higher as, as we move forward with concrete projects. And as we have uh, boots on the ground, we have people and we have experience, we are bringing part of those concrete projects to the, to, to do the funding process. So one of the things I picture when, when I think of the, you know, their Vision 2030 goals is things like smart cities and things like that and yeah. actually utilizing your transactional Internet of Things. Is that what we're talking about? Correct. I mean, uh, uh, Intelligent City requires one billion semiconductor, one city, one billion. And you have cities like Neon and, and, and others emerging in the country that they are going to be truly uh, a showcase on what a smart cities of the future will be. Smart cities has been, uh, you know, we we're talking about smart city for many years, but we don't really yet have a smart cities. Uh, we have uh, pieces of cities on there are smart, but not really a truly uh, Design from scratch, smart city, and that's what the Saudis are bringing. They are bringing a total innovation. They are creating a, a very powerful, sustainable platform because obviously they have sustainability issues. It's a very warm country, so they have to control climate in in a more complex environment than what we have. And and we are helping them to do that, right? So uh, yes, the smart cities, big users, and and then. Because when you have one billion objects in a smart cities, you need to interrelate the transaction between those objects. Imagine a car talking to a traffic light uh, or a car getting data from another car and you need to pay for that information exchange. So that's what the uh, Hedera based seal coin uh, is going to help, you know, is, is, is creating those enormous multiple transactions between objects, then they are they, they are going to be transacting in a very trusted and unique way. This this has never been done. So the smart city obviously is the platform which will leverage and, and make this exponential. So Carlos, what do you think some of the first objects that will participate in these transactional Internet of Things network? And when do you think the first transactions will actually hit the Hedera network? I mean, mobility is the big thing, right? Mobility means the car to car transactions. The car needs data from another car. Uh, you know, we're talking about robo taxis, uh, uh, cars, then they are paying uh, the uh, parking meter or cars that they are paying electricity from a uh, EV charger or cars and they are getting uh, um, direction data from the cloud. So this is going to be um, one of the first industries happening already. I mean, we have already clients and they are buying uh, chips with the uh, capability of, of transacting between themselves. So everything which is people moving in a city, cars moving in a city, trucks moving in a city, all that is the first uh, market. The identity is stored in a ledger, in a, in a Hedera ledger. So every time somebody transacts with another, that goes back to the Hedera ledger, right? And the ledger say yes or no, uh, I accept that transaction. So there is a fee, transactional fee that is injected directly into the Hedera uh, network. Uh, and that fee is a transactional fee, you know? So imagine um, billions of transactions generating billions of microcents, and those microcents aggregate into the revenue of the platform. 
I love the idea, you know, we talk about onboarding the next billion users, but of course we want to do that, but onboarding the next trillion objects is just as important or even more so because they're going to be doing most of these transactions. So Carlos, we also got some really good community questions. We got one from H Barbarian who asked, can Carlos please go deeper into how his new chips compete with GPU chips? He said he found some really good information, but he'd like to hear it from you as well. So G GPU are doing an amazing job, mainly because the game industry and now AI, but their limitation is are based on centralized infrastructure. So that means big data centers and they're growing enormously. Uh, they are using a lot of energy. Uh, this is not sustainable. I mean, uh, the centralization of GPU helps now because there's a huge demand on AI, but it will not help in the future. I mean, so so we, we, are, we are looking into a decentralized semiconductor strategy, which is based on RISC V and TPM, which are the two big industry standards, where basically you can generate the same power of a GPU, but in a decentralized way. So imagine 1,000 chips having the same power than one GPU chip. Uh, and the beauty of that is that you can let the world to benefit from AI and not only the big companies that they can afford to pay billions of dollars to equip themselves with data centers and GPU, right? So, so this is uh, democratizing the IoT industry by decentralizing the power from big data centers, which are not sustainable. Big data centers are big polluters, right? I mean, you need a lot of energy to power those data centers. If you decentralize, then you can let uh, billions of, of, of devices decentralize around the world uh, to communicate between themselves in a peer-to-peer -peer way, exchange energy between themselves, exchange transaction, and reach the same power uh, and the same processing capability of a GPU chip. So, so the, obviously there's going to be now the focus is on GPU. So everybody's investing in NVIDIA companies like that. But, but slowly people are going to realize that actually blockchain and Hedera and, and, and Wiseki and CLSQ are a perfect uh, potential, not, not, I will not say a competitor, but I will say a, 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 a component of decentralization of that amazing power that is being generated now by GPU. And I'm sure because the competition on GPU is also getting very high, uh, NVIDIA and other companies are going to start to look as well to look into this segment right because uh, decentralization always goes faster than centralization so that's the main issue decentralization against centralization uh, democratization of the technology against creating a monopolies which is what is happening now and making ai available for the rest of the world without the need to centralize in one or two cities and making those cities huge powerful so, well, that's one of the things, you know, NVIDIA is is doing an amazing job in the space they have, but they only can grow so much. Do you think they're going to be looking to decentralization uh, as the next phase of, you know, AI and everything else that we have going on here? It is a different philosophy. Uh, it's like uh, Google went so big on search and uh, how difficult it is for them to, to move away from search, right? I mean, uh, once you get into that so big and so fast um, to, to retrofit yourself and, and go into decentralizing, it's very difficult because the culture of the company is to create those very big data centers selling you billions of dollars on, on, on chips. The decentralization is like the open source of IoT, basically, is that people will... You know, by the way, RISC-V is an open source standard, so you can you can basically develop anywhere in the world. So the, the chips that we are selling, uh, they are post-quantum chip. That means that they're able also to defend a quantum attack. Uh, GPUs um, uh, chips are going to be also challenged by quantum. You know, quantum can attack very easily data centers. So if you centralize, it's going to be more difficult to decentralize uh, attacks because you will have to break chip by chip rather a centralization location. So, so as a cyber security design is, is a much better design. But I think new companies like uh, CLSQ, like Wiseki, like Hedera are going to become the next players. Uh, obviously, NVIDIA is going to be very big for a long time. But as you say, they are reaching a, a situation where it's going to be a saturation in the market and they will have to retrofit themselves. Well, it's a fantastic vision. I'm not surprised that our community is curious about this portion of the tech, but of course they're going to be curious about the token as well. Pearson Art was curious about your SEAL token. Can you go into a deeper dive around the token? You know, when is it going to be available? What are the tokenomics for the token? And how is it going to be used for communication between the devices? 
Yeah, so the good news is actually, uh, I don't know, and this is public information, everything I'm giving you is public information because we are a listed company, right? But um, we, we just launched a company with uh, Hashgraph. The Hashgraph Association is a shareholder of Seal Coin AG, which is a Swiss company in, in Zug. So this has only happened just a few weeks ago. Uh, I was with uh, Andrew, we were in Monaco with the Prince, talking about how Hedera and, uh, and, and CL Coin could help him in raising funds for his uh, Ocean Protection Foundation, which is a Monaco foundation. So he's also very interested and, and curious about tokenization or see how we can raise funding to resolve some of the uh, very, very urgent needs of the ocean, right? Of uh, avoiding the, the ocean to, to suffocate and they want to to use uh, this technology. So, so this company is already moving into several very concrete uh, projects that they are now wanting to develop a partnership with us. So uh, Hashgraph and, and Wisekey is they are shareholders of, of Seal Coin AG. So that's a very major milestone. Now, the, the Seal Coin roadmap is very advanced. As you know, uh, the tokenization is ready. Actually, we are working with the top experts from Hedera and, and Hashgraph because they have done that before. So we are using their, their knowledge and their experience on tokenization. So that part goes, is going very well. Uh, we also finalized, actually, you have SealCoin.ai, which you can see the uh, progress of the company. Uh, where we also have developed uh, or, or on uh, white paper. So the, all that is there. Now we are in the uh, regulatory process. As you know, tokens are uh, confused. People don't, some of the regulators don't know the difference between utility and security tokens. So we are discussing now with the uh, FIMA, which is the Swiss regulator, and with the SEC, with this American regulator, because we are a listed company on the NASDAQ, right? Uh, by the way, this is a very interesting project here. It's going to be one of the first time a NASDAQ listed company is going to issue a token, you know, so that's a very powerful message as well to the industry that you can combine the old economy with the new economy. So we, we really, uh, we gave ourselves the, uh, the, the token to be uh, on exchange by Q4 this year. Uh, we are totally focused on it. It's going to happen. Uh, now what we are developing, which is what the market needs, is use cases on use the token, you know, like a proof of concepts. So the first proof of concepts are done by us, by our technology, by connecting cars with plug. We also have a very exciting project coming, uh, which has been already announced as well. So we can discuss that, which is drone technology, wise key chips, uh, uh, sorry, CL, CLSQ chip and wise key security are securing power drones. Those are drones that they are used for all kinds of logistic operations. And uh, Parrot is one of the leading drone companies in the world. They are competing against the Chinese. You know, it's a lot of issues about using Chinese drone in the United States, for instance. So we have a very good alternative now. And those drones are exchanging services. So let's say uh, you want to own the data the drone is capturing with a camera, you're going to pay with seal coin. You want to the drone uh, to do a specific delivery because the drone is like an Amazon delivery, you're going to pay with seal coin. So we are developing proof of concept that by the time we launch the, the, the coin, it's not only uh, a speculative project, it is really based on, on concrete uh, use cases that is going to, as you say before, is going to just expand because we are dealing with trillions of objects and, and, and this is going to get bigger and bigger. And by the time you, you cover those trillion objects, you are as big already as an NVIDIA company is, right? So so there there is a huge market opportunity ahead of us. Very exciting. So I want to talk a little bit more about your infrastructure. The launch of your second constellation of satellites will take place this fall by SpaceX. Would you be up for some co-branded events with CLSQ and Hedera? And can you just tell us a little bit more about the launch? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, as you, uh, if you follow me on social media, you see that I am traveling a lot with uh, Andrew. Andrew is the uh, uh, Andrew Forson is the uh, chief investment officer of Hedera. Uh, he's the guy now running uh, all the investment discussions uh, of the Hedera Group and uh, a hash graph. And, and then uh, what we do together is uh, use those events. Uh, we did an event together in Italy uh, about the uh, tokenization of art. We did that just uh, two weeks ago. We were with uh, Prince uh, Albert in Monaco, also with Hedera. And obviously, yeah, we are working towards making a very big splash during the launch because the launch, not only is a launch and everybody loves to see a rocket leaving, you know, that's a very big experience. But in plus of that, you have the next generation satellite and we have developed 
Kalav, which is going to be the first launch of a new generation satellite that has already the capability of exchanging tokens between the satellite and the Earth station. So those tokens are exchanged. So imagine that you want to use the satellite to track a container in the middle of the sea, and that communication is going to be paid with tokens, and those tokens are going to be uh, issued on the Hedera network. So, so this is a moment where all those technology converge into a, a rocket launch. So we are very excited about that because this is a SpaceX and, and they are they will all, always give you the pen of the weather conditions and the positioning. You always know one week or two weeks. So we don't know if it's going to be the 1st of uh, November or the 27th of October. We will inform the market in due time. And yes, we're going to do an event. Uh, we're going to bring, uh, we're going to bring uh, technology partners. We're going to bring uh, experts to analyze this world first, which is uh, blockchain on the space, right? I mean, the the possibilities are endless. We're even talking now to the next generation blockchain nodes that could go into the space. Imagine rather of running nodes, which requires a lot of cybersecurity on Earth. Imagine that you uh, just put the uh, the node on the space by launching next to the satellite uh, communication process and then revert the uh, verification done from Earth to a space. That will reduce the cost of uh, maintaining data centers, maintaining nodes. So imagine blockchain on the space is a very big endeavor that could inspire people by launching this project in, uh, in November. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're geographically uh, you know, decentralized. We have on every continent you know in the world except for antarctica we have a hedera node but we don't have one in space yet so it's, it's great exactly. that you're thinking along those lines um i know that you have a relationship with elon do you think there's any way we could get him involved because i know he's interested in this kind of stuff as well he, he's a i mean he's a technology uh, fanatic so if he if he realize and he will realize that we are pushing the envelope then we are bringing something that he doesn't have yet because he he obviously is a very big blockchain ambassador and he loves crypto, but he didn't put it yet together himself. So if he sees Haas coming with a serious project, I'm sure he will get all his support. I already met him, as you know, uh, in a political environment that, that will be in a technical environment and, uh, and we are launching uh, his own rocket, you know. So, yeah, for sure, we will continue getting his support. Um, but, but what is more important here is this decentralization effort. There's a lot of people that they are willing to put time, money, because this is the future of the earth. It's not to create mega cities and, and, and go into a, a, a centralization mode again, as we were in the past. This is about decentralization, about inclusion, about sustainability, and use the space as the next uh, frontier. And yes, let's put blockchain on the space. That's what this project is going to be all about. Well, I'd love to ask him a few questions. Carlos, is there anything else you'd like to pass on before we let you go? No, just to congratulate you for your channel is great. We did a great coverage last time. I think right on, I see all your interviews. So you are an amazing ambassador and we thank you for that. Well, again, we appreciate you taking the time and good luck. Good luck for you too. All the best.